And hey guys, it's me, your friendly neighborhood Pokemaniac, coming back at you with another thrilling episode of Repel Wearing Off uh, and Pokemon Platinum subsequently. In the last episode, we made it through uh, the unexplored, well, our unexplored part of Victory Road all the way to Route 224, meeting up with the original Pokemon Goth GF and then <laughs> breaking things off with her. Oh, will I ever find myself another goth GF? We may, the world may never know. But in this episode, we are going to explore Route 224, uh, bars, baby, and uh, see what it has to offer us. All right. And like any good route, there are going to be trainers. There's something about you. You're not just anybody. I challenge you. All right. Well, challenge me, you shall. And uh, somehow, uh, this uh, ace trainer has intuited Ruben had intuited that uh, we are, in fact, uh, very, uh, we're kind of a big deal, all right? Uh, Pokemon League champions, uh, as it were. M my goodness, that might mean absolutely nothing considering these, you know, levels that we've been running into. Uh, but say hello to uh, th this uh, abomination uh, <laughs> of a pocket monster. It is Nuzleaf. Um, oh, it's already dark type. Uh, Nuzleaf is the grass dark type Pokemon. It evolves into Shiftry and is the evolved form of C Dot, which is uh, probably one of the best designed Pokemon's Pokemon's Pokemon, if you ask me. Uh, we are going to swap out here since we do not have uh, Marley's assistance anymore. Uh, but yeah, Nuzleaf evolves into Shiftry. It's grass dark type, very unique. Uh, it's quick. Uh, that's all I really have to say about that. All right, but we are going to uh, have to suffer here through a faint attack. Um, as you can see, he is, uh, you know, shirtless and screaming to the heavens, uh, wondering why uh, made him like this. All right, and we are going to... Eh, Ice Shard should be enough to take this thing out. Uh, I, I believe Tannenbaum has enough strength. This thing isn't even fully evolved, so I'm not too worried. Go ahead and smack it with the Ice Shard. And uh, you think you're fast. Uh, Ice Shard's got priority, bruh. And with that, Tannenbaum claims another victim. And Maytag grew to level 53. Not bad. All right. So let's see what is up next. What new Pokemon? Uh, uh, it's just an old Gyarados. I suppose we can take on another one of these. All right. I was expecting here to battle, you know, brand new Pokemon that we haven't seen thus far. And, you know, getting into the nitty gritty details about... You know, the intergenerational, you know, battles for supremacy, and... Nope, just Gyarados. Which, I mean, well, to be fair, Gyarados has <laughs> been pretty pretty solid uh, of a Pokemon uh, from start to finish. Uh, to this day, still, uh, you, I can recommend a Gyarados with a, uh, w without even thinking twice about it, so... But take that, Ruben. You had a different level of expertise for sure. Oh, thank you for noticing. Uh... Yeah, was it, was it my swagger? Okay, uh, and we just ran in there without a max repel. Um, so we're going to uh, adjust that uh, real quick so we don't run into any wild Pokemon, any undesirables, as it were. And we're going to challenge this old gentleman. And let me guess, you uh, d you know don't have a beard and have a long flowing mane uh, in your battle sprite. I've seen countless trainers and even more Pokemon. So what kind of trainer are you? Uh, I'm the best there ever is, son. All right, and I did I call it or what? Ooh, veteran Armando. And he's got himself a pile of goo. Uh, yeah, say hello to Muck. Muck is the <laughs> the pure poison type Pokemon. Look at this guy. Uh, you gotta love him. Uh, Muck, it's pure poison type. Uh, been around since Gen 1. Uh, pretty good in uh, the special defense and attack department. Um, it's not like, you know, the best Pokemon, but yeah, solid choice, particularly if you like poison type Pokemon, and if you really like the, uh, anime, um, then you, you love this guy, uh, as much as he loved, uh, Ash, so, we're gonna hit this thing with a Shadow Ball, maybe lower the special defense a little bit, uh, it doesn't really matter at this point, and we're gonna get toxic hey, hey, you can't do that, that's toxic, alright, uh, we are going to take a little bit of damage for that, uh, if we let that, uh, you know, carry on, that will be, uh, taking, uh, you know, more and more HP, uh, every turn until, uh, we inevitably, uh, die from this, uh, poisoning. 
Okay, and Armando's gonna send out Mighty Anna. All right, another Pokemon we haven't seen thus far. Uh, but uh, <laughs> maybe you guys haven't seen a Mighty Anna, but I know how to deal with these bad boys. We're gonna throw out Zuko here because Mighty Anna is a pure Dark type Pokemon. Look at that thing! Like now, I really like Mighty Anna's design. I'm not kidding you. I really do. It is just such a garbage Pokemon. <laughs> I, I mean, look at that thing. It's like, you know, it would do Houndoom proud, uh, you know, by ways of looks. And it was really, really cool um, in third generation because it is like an early route Pokemon and it's pure dark type. You don't see that very much, but it's just not good. I can't recommend this thing. Uh, unfortunate because it just cool Pokemon, cool concept. Glad there's a, you know, a variation in types at the beginning of a route in Gen 3. Uh, but this is Gen 4, so we uh, don't have to lament over it uh, quite yet. What we do have to lament over is facing down the uh, long, daunting tongue of this Lickitung. But Zuko seems to be, uh, even even under an Intimidate, uh, has no problem cleaning up these uh, normal and Dark-type Pokemon like they were nothing. I see. Simply outstanding. Alright, that's the type of trainer I am. Outstanding. Thank you. Alright, and... Oh, that's right. I... Already forgot that Maytag was <laughs> in dire straits. Uh, but what we are going to do is we are going to heal that with a full restore, which we are running dangerously low on. Uh, we haven't had to use these yet. Again, we got that false sense of confidence from Marley, and it just... Wow. Just uh, been downhill. It's been downhill since uh, our goth GF left us. Um, but we are going to move right along. Um, honestly, like there are some unique Pokemon that we can find. Um, as you guys can tell, I'm from different generations and stuff now that we have the National Dex. But at this point in time, at this critical juncture, uh, I am kind of of the mind to uh, avoid trainers when I can. Oh, that's not fair. Um, can I sneak around at all? Nope, not at all. Uh, but we can get around this guy. Maybe we can get... A <laughs> that's right, I'm very, very tricky. All right, and uh, once again, um, this hasn't come up in a while because we've just been bad at... Oh, a Destiny Knot. That is a good item for breeding. Um, it does something to ensure... I believe what it is is that it ensures that the Pokemon will come out with the nature of the mother? I think that's what it does. Um, I'll fact check myself here in post. But at this point in time, I mean, we've completed the Sinnoh Pokedex. Uh, we're just going to be kind of yammering on through battles. So I'm going to uh, avoid those uh, as much as I can. And I will uh, likely start cutting them out if nothing uh, of interest is in them. Uh, when it came to Marley, uh, it was a little easier because, you know, it's just, you know, double battles the whole time. And speak of the devil and she shall appear. I, I don't like to talk. Could have fooled me, you little chatterbox. I choose my words carefully, but they may still hurt someone accidentally. You can hurt me, Mar- I ignore what I just said. When I think of that, I clam up. That's why I think this certain Pokemon is so wonderful. It's a Pokemon that conveys the feelings of gratitude in a nice way. Aw, all she's ever wanted was to meet this little Pokemon. That stone tablet, it has a strange feel to it. All right, and of course, Marley is not our only attraction here. Uh, look, literally and figuratively. That stone tower has a strange feel to it. All right, uh, maybe she doesn't like talking, but uh, she'll just say the same thing over and over again. But uh, speaking of uh, you know strange stone tablets, that is a very rude thing to call a uh, esteemed professor of Pokemon. Uh, is there an item over here first? All right. Yeah, that's right, guys. So say hello. To Professor Oak, once again. Now, Professor Oak uh, will not be here. If you do not have the event item or the mystery gift item, uh, Professor Oak's letter, uh, which is, you know, the main reason we came here. You know, aside from, you know, getting a goth GF. So, let's see what Oak has to say. Ah, Jake, it's good to see you. Without any, fur without any further ado... Th th that, that feels wrong, like, phrase-wise. I'd like you to examine this stone tablet. Oh, would ya? Something just like it was also discovered in the Kanto region. I want to ask for your help in solving the mystery behind this. All right. I tried deciphering the engravings on the stone tablet. Apparently, it is for a trainer to engrave his or her thoughts after growing as a person on an adventure. If a trainer fitting that description would be you. Yeah, or like any other trainer who is on an adventure. I, like, I get it. Like, we've been through probably more than your average trainer. Uh, more than your average 10-year-old, uh, that's for sure. But, like... I don't know, I feel like uh, there are some uh, other trainers who have grown and changed. Man, yeah, but 
whatever. It, it, we're doing it for the story, all right? That's why I'm asking you for your help. You've met so many people in Pokemon. You've experienced many things that shaped you into the person that you are. I want to. I want you to sincerely tell me who affected you the most. Tell me, to whom do you most want to say your thanks? Uh. Uh. Marley, sweetie, cover your ears. All right. Uh, there is only one trainer I can think of uh, that we can thank. Uh, for our uh, growth as both a trainer and as men. And that's right. That is none other than the champion herself. The lovely Cynthia. Um, <laughs> There we go. The lovely Cynthia. Oh, Cynthia, oh Cynthia. Wherefore art thou Cynthia? All right. Uh, well, <laughs> it would help if we spelled Cynthia right. My goodness. Uh, Marley, keep your ears covered. Sweetie, this is this this is this is it's, it's something I, I just got to do real fast. All right, um, all right. So we're going to carve Cynthia uh, onto the stone here. Hmm. You most want to express your thanks to Cynthia. You are absolutely certain of it. So yeah, if you do misspell it or you know you think of something else, you can change it. But I, overall, this really doesn't change what happens here. But yes, I'm absolutely certain. I want to thank uh, Cynthia. And. With that, oh, it sounds so cute. Why? Why am I the slow one? Oh, there it goes. Was that Sonic the Hedgehog? It somehow—is it somehow connected to the stone tablet? Mm, where did that Pokemon go? Its destination is intriguing. I mean, I guess. Thank you. That must have been the Pokemon that could... Sorry about that, guys. All those flowers popped up and the pollen just... Yeah, it absolutely made me sneeze. Uh, that must have been the Pokemon that conveys the feelings of gratitude. You made it so I could see it. So, I have to convey thanks in my own words, too. Marley. Sweetie. Oh. Uh, you're conveying your thanks to me? Oh, maybe she's not such a sealed, emotionally sealed off, uh, angry goth GF as much as a sensitive, uh, goth GF, so. To you too. Thank you. Oh, she was thanking the Pokemon in... Uh, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Was that the Pokemon? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay where'd it go? It's destination intriguing. Um, I'm, I, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. The destination is not all that intriguing. It's literally just this path. Um, but, uh, very pretty transition here, um, to all the flowers and everything. And yeah, I guess, um, that Pokemon was the Pokemon that, you know, uh, I guess, uh, personifies gratitude. And so, carving the name of the trainer we wanted to thank and give gratitude to, uh, I guess that, uh, activated, uh, this Pokemon, uh, whatever it is. But, since we have no, uh, you know, rightful clue what the heck that Pokemon was, uh, there's really only one thing we can do, and that is follow it. So we're going after it, guys. And running, running, running. All right, Sea Break Pet. Great time for uh, Repel to wear off, but... Ooh, listen to that soothing music. So welcome to Sea Break Path. And I guess this really was Sonic the Hedgehog, because uh, the only game I've seen uh, straight paths this long was, in fact, in Sonic. So uh, we're going to keep going. Um... Really beautiful flower gradient, I have to say. Um, but really not... Man, could you imagine? Like, you, you know how people say, like, you know, take some time to stop and smell the roses? Well, if you did that, you would never get through this. So, let's keep on going. My goodness, we, we are getting our steps in today. <sighs> is this is that seawater? I, I hope not. I need a drink. Oh my gosh. Uh, uh, uh. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, we made our way to Flower Paradise. Gardenia would really like this place. I don't know why I'm thinking about Gardenia right now. I've missed so many women on my journeys. Alright, and that's right, guys. Welcome to the Flower Paradise. And at the pinnacle of Flower Paradise, there sits a very grateful Pokemon. And uh, like all of these Pokemon, we are going to save 
before we uh, confront it. Oh, we're going to save a lot of data before we confront it, I suppose, because, you know, Lord knows we, uh, honestly, probably, you know, it's saving a lot of data. Probably all of that data is just, you know, running across that uh, flower bridge uh, that, you know, Sonic the Hedgehog here uh, made us uh, run. But, dang! All right, so, uh, without further ado, let us encounter... Cute! Is this another spirit Pokemon of a lake? No, it's not another spirit Pokemon of the lake. It gets the legendary splash screen, has normal battle music. It is Shaman. Oh, look at it. It's so cute. Oh, look how tiny it is. Shaman. That's right. Say hello. Shaman is, in fact, a legendary Pokemon. Uh, a very tiny, petite, adorable legendary Pokemon. Now, Shaman is a pure grass type Pokemon. And it is an interesting Pokemon in that. Uh, well, number one, as you can see, it is only level 30. Compared to all of the other Poke... I forgot to throw a quick ball at this thing. Compared to, again, like all the other legendary Pokemon we've been running into, this thing is actually like, you know, teeny tiny. Um, so we really don't want to do any, any more damage to it. I knew that a Thunderbolt uh, was not going to, you know, destroy it. Uh, because, you know, it, it is a legendary Pokemon. Um, interesting thing. Uh, what am I going to throw at it? Uh, I guess we'll start with Ultra Balls? Yeah, may as well. Uh, it's not nighttime, it's not in a cave, so our Dusk Balls aren't going to work. But yeah, Shaman, pure grass type Pokemon. Um, a unique thing about Shaman is the fact that all of its stats are 100. And as you can see... Uh, I need to know if I am just very lucky or if its catch rate is like really, really high. Uh, what? That... I'm getting bombarded with, like, too much information. Okay. Shaman, the gratitude Pokemon. Pure grass type. Its stats are all 100 across the board, so you can customize this thing any way you want. Um, pretty nifty. Um, we didn't get a chance to see it, but Shaman, like uh, the majority of the Pokemon here in Gen... Legendary Pokemon, I should say, in Gen 4, come with their own signature move. And Shaman's signature move is Seed Flare, which is uh, a... Very massively strong grass type move, um, and it uh, lowers. Uh, it can also lower the target special defense. Um, 120 base power, uh, 85 accuracy. Not bad at all. So, uh, yeah, good Pokemon. Again, I am very curious. I'm scanning uh, this information page uh, that I'm on to see if it just has a high cat or yeah, high catch rate. Uh, okay, yeah, its catch rate is 45. So this thing's not as a uh, hard to catch as other legendary Pokemon, but that caught me <laughs> totally off guard. I'll tell you what, uh, sorry for the anticlimactic legendary battle. Uh, I am thankful that the Shaman got into the first, uh, Pokeball, uh, that we threw at it, but it's also eight inches. Uh, that is a tiny little Pokemon, so the flowers all over its body burst into bloom if it is lovingly hugged and senses gratitude. Ah! Oh my gosh. Uh, cuteness overload here. We're going to get this thing transferred over to box one in BB's PC. Uh, never to be uh, seen or heard from again. Uh, well, that's not uh, technically true because there is um, one other thing. Uh, one other uh, thing that we have to uh, bring up uh, in regards to Shaman, which we will get into just a second. But before that, we are going to uh, sprint our way back. Uh, we are you know, going to be dang, dang near ready for that uh, you know, uh, Pokemon Marathon. Uh, in Jubilife uh, here uh, after running through here. My goodness, I cannot comprehend why they decided to make this so long and drawn out. But it is, honestly, it's really pretty. Um, all things considered, again, the flower gradient that they have going on is not bad at all. So maybe I shouldn't complain and, you know, maybe take a minute to uh, stop and smell the roses. Uh, okay, all my friends abandoned me. Uh, but with that, guys, we are going to head on over to a another area. Our whole uh, debacle with, uh, you know, this area uh, behind the Pokemon League has come to its close. Um, it was nice. We, uh, you know, got a Goth GF out of it, and we got a Sonic the Hedgehog out of it. So, uh, but where we are going next may surprise you. It is Floroma Town. So yeah, that's what's behind the Pokemon League. The more you know. Uh, Fleuroma Town. 
All right, so we're going to head in here, and we are actually going to retrieve Shaman uh, out of my way, uh, <laughs> out of the PC, and we are... Da, 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 da. There it is. Oh, look how cute. Oh, and it's holding a lumberry. That's very nice. Um, lumberries are very hard to come by. There's only like two lumberry trees in the entirety of Sinnoh. So uh, get, getting one of those uh, is you know, not so bad, if you ask me. Uh, we are going to uh, pluck that off of that little shaman. Uh, our little shaman, I suppose, now. Um, not just any uh, old shaman. So we are going to take the lumberry throw shaman up here and even at level like it's at level 30 and it's got 102 uh hp so again not not a terrible pokemon it's a cute little thing uh but we come up here with shaman in our party oh a shaman if you have that pokemon then you should also have some gracedia flowers yeah guys if you remember when we got here uh you know super early on into our pokemon adventure the she talked about Grace Adia flowers, and I was all like, oh, don't know what those are. Maybe those will come in handy. Yeah. Um, and she's got herself a whole bunch, and she's going to give us the Grace Adia flower. All right. And that is a key item. My goodness, very fancy. Uh, let's see. Uh, Grace Adia flowers have been around a long time in this region. They're given as bouquets to express feelings of gratitude. Isn't that charming? With these Grace Adia flowers, you don't need to say thanks with words. You can, instead, demonstrate your gratitude with a bouquet! How nice. All right, and, uh, well, yeah, if the flower is about the gratitude and we got the Pokemon about the gratitude, uh, I feel like we can combine the two. So let us go grab the Gracedia flower, a flower sometimes bundled in bouquets to convey gratitude on special occasions like birthdays. And we are going to use it. And uh, you have to use it specifically on your Shaman. And... Oh, look at that animation. Something crazy happens. Shaman changed for me. I don't know what the heck a for me is. I'm not European. All right. So, say hello to Shaman's Sky Form. That's right. Shaman does not only uh, is not only the cute little hedgehog that you see. It's also this funky little reindeer with a scarf. Uh, as you can see, Shaman has now gotten a flying subtype. Uh and I believe its ability is different. Oh, it's adamant. That's nice. So it's a physical attacker. Uh, it's got itself the ability Serene Grace, which is a phenomenal ability. Uh, Serene Grace um, boosts the likelihood. Uh, we've been over this when we were going over, like, Togekiss. Uh, boosts the likelihood of added effects appearing. So if you recall Seed Flare, um, it's got, like, it already has a ridiculous chance of dropping uh, the special attack or defense. The special... Uh, the special defense, that's what it is. My my goodness, I'm sorry. I could not scroll fast enough. Um, it already has a great chance of um, lowering the target's special defense. Um, and with Serene Grace, I mean, that just increases the likelihood by 30%. So that's redonkulous. However, uh, not only does Shaman gain a, another, like a sub flying subtype, uh, Shaman's stats also get changed around a little bit. Uh, when it's in its sky form compared to its base form. Its base form, as I said, it has 100 stats all across the board. However, the sky form is a little more offensive. So it trades in its uh, defense and special defense, dropping them down to 75 each for a boost in attack, special attack, and speed. Uh, very minor boost in special attack. It goes up to 103. Special attack goes up to 120, and its speed goes up to 127, making it a very fast and very strong special attacker. Um... So, not bad, not bad at all. But, however, um, weirdly enough, uh, sh th this change in form with Shaman, uh, you can't just use that anytime you want, oddly enough. Um, for whatever reason, I don't know why they decided on this, you cannot change Shaman's form at night. So, that is from the hours of 8 p.m., to 3 a.m. You cannot have Shaman Sky form. Also, weirdly enough, if your Shaman is frozen, you also cannot uh, change its form uh, to Sky form, which I think is a pretty easy solve uh, by just going to like the Pokemon Center or using a full resource or something. But weird restrictions. I'm sure there's like some lore version, or if it you know like follows the you know movie logic. Uh, I'm sure that's the reason for it. But uh, very interesting. There is no other Pokemon that has a time reliant forms uh funny enough so uh but with that guys um we completed everything we wanted to uh 
you know, behind the Elite Four. Um, and we have just darn near completed basically everything uh, to do in Sinnoh. Sinnoh proper, I should say. So, in the next episode, guys, uh, we will be leaving our jolly old mainland of Sinnoh for hopefully greener pastures, brighter skies, and bluer seas. So, uh, but we're going to have to wait to the next episode for that, guys. So, if you liked what you saw, go ahead and smash that subscribe button, like, dislike, whatever you're feeling like. And until next time, guys, I will catch you later. Oh, and also, I would love to show my gratitude to you guys. Thank you for watching. Running, running in the doors. Running, running here some more. Running in, running in the doors. Running indoors. Pokemon Gen 4. Pikachu?